On the southern slopes of the Santa Cruz Mountains lies the San Lorenzo Valley, bordered on its western edge by Ben Lomond Mountain. In the heart of the mountain is Fall Creek, flowing with water as clear and pure as any you'll find in the Sierra Nevada. Which is not surprising, since evidence has led geologists to believe that millions of years ago, Ben Lomond Mountain was once part of a large chunk of the southern Sierra Nevada that broke off and was gradually carried northward along the western side of the San Andreas and other faults to where it presently sits. The Fall Creek watershed was then slowly sculpted over time by running water out of the mountain's unique geological formations, creating the ever-evolving landscape we see today. The story of the watershed can be told in many interconnected ways. There's the story of plants and animals, and the story of the river. There's the story of the water cycle, which leads to the story of surface water, streams and tributaries from which the San Lorenzo Valley Water District gets much of its water for the community of Felton and also the story of water stored deep within Ben Lomond Mountain, an important additional source of Felton's year-round water supply. Many people are drawn to Fall Creek by the rhythm of ever-moving waters and the natural beauty along its many hiking trails. Thousands of people drive over Fall Creek every day on Highway 9 without even noticing it. Because of the deep forested nature of Ben Lomond Mountain, it's hard to perceive the size, shape, and extent of the watershed from the ground. We can gain a better perspective of the easternmost part from above at the San Lorenzo Valley School District's High School Aquaculture Program and Middle School Science Academy Garden adjacent to the track and field areas. Ashley Creek, a small tributary to Fall Creek, runs through the forest along the back of the campuses and enters Fall Creek just above the Highway 9 bridge. But the view from the east doesn't provide the most complete sense of the scope of Fall Creek's watershed and main tributaries. We get a more detailed perspective from the Fall Creek parking area along Felton Empire Road. With the town of Felton in the distance to the southeast, and the high school to the northeast, we can make out the large expanse of the North Fork of Fall Creek, stretching out to the northwest toward its headwaters just below Empire Grade at an elevation of about 2,300 feet. And to the west on the left, we can start to distinguish the sub-watersheds of South Fall Creek around the area of the Lime Kilns and Bennett Creek. As mountains go, Ben Lomond Mountain is fairly small, but it has a big impact on the water quality and supply of the San Lorenzo Valley because of its geological makeup of igneous and metamorphic rocks. About a hundred million years ago, a huge mass of molten rock cooled to form what would become the Sierra Nevada Range. As it cooled, it solidified into igneous rocks such as quartz diorite, a granite-like rock which forms the core of Ben Lomond Mountain and can be seen along the trails, exposed by running waters and the footsteps of generations of hikers. The metamorphic rocks on Ben Lomond Mountain began as sedimentary formations above the molten mass. Heat and pressure changed them into schist and marble. A watershed does not merely shed water, though in times of heavy rainfall and runoff, it may seem like that. It's actually a catchment basin. The thick forest canopy and understory vegetation, along with the herb layer and rich heavy leaf litter and root layers, all act together to intercept and slow the force of heavy winter rains and runoff, allowing them gradually to enter the surface water and to soak into the underground aquifer system. 
accumulated water which has seeped in and drained down through fractures in the inactive Ben Lomond fault oozes out again as though it were being squeezed from a giant sponge, filtering into the creek and its tributaries and also emerging as springs. In addition to a good supply of fresh drinking water, our healthy watershed ecosystem provides other important benefits, such as clean air, flood and erosion reduction, and food and habitat for diverse wildlife. A regeneration of second-growth redwoods and mixed evergreens has begun to replace the ancient old-growth forests which once blanketed the eastern flank of Ben Lomond Mountain until the extensive clear-cut logging of the late 1800s. Every ring of these relatively young trees represents a fallen giant, cut down to fuel the kilns to extract lime from the lime rock mined out of nearby quarries. The presence of sedges on the forest floor indicates the emergence of seep areas and springs, which form the beginning of the headwaters of the North Fork of Fall Creek. Further down the North Fork, remnants of the historic barrel mill can be found. Along the South Fork of Fall Creek lie exposed pieces of moss-covered lime rock, which were blasted out but never used as the days of clear-cut logging and lime extraction in the Santa Cruz Mountains came to an end. Downstream from the lime kilns, the north and south forks meet to form the tumbling waters of the main stem of Fall Creek. Exposed quartz diorite in various sizes and shapes gets rounded and smoothed as it's tumbled by the moving water of the creek. Woody debris from fallen trees slows the descending waters and forms small dams, pools, and waterfalls which oxygenate the water. The Fall Creek watershed is a place of immense beauty. Each season yields its own opportunity for inspiration. In spring, a variety of birds build nests and raise their young. Blossoms begin to open in an unusual skunk cabbage marsh, flourishing in the high water table of a low spring-fed wetland. And an array of rare native plants come into bloom, from the modest little sugar scoop to the dazzling leopard lily. As blooms fade and seeds set, summer comes into its lush fullness. The moist environment of Fall Creek provides the perfect habitat for many species of ferns, including graceful lady ferns, giant chain ferns, sword ferns, wood ferns, and delicate five-fingered ferns. Thick shade and cool running water invite hikers to take pleasant walks out of the summer heat. In early autumn, dragonflies find still pools in the creek to lay their eggs. Winter's high water flows invigorate the forest. Lichens, liverworts, and mosses come alive almost overnight, drawing bryophyte enthusiasts to Fall Creek to admire and study them. Mushrooms sprout, and overwintering ladybugs converge in deep, wet places. A short walk from the parking area, a little footbridge crosses Bennett Creek. A small tributary of Fall Creek in summer, it swells dramatically with the winter rains, entering Fall Creek in a torrent. Its headwaters originate at Bennett Springs on San Lorenzo Valley Water District property. Uh, Bennett Springs is a, is a groundwater source. It comes out in the Bennett Kelm here at this time, it's been diverted into this kiln. And probably at one time, the, the Bennett Spring was coming down the creek over here um, and has been diverted for security reasons uh, because it's a supply source for the Felton area. Opening the door to Bennett Springs, 
offers a brief glimpse into the mysterious fractured depths of Ben Lomond Mountain. It's a uh, kind of a coarse topography with the marble, so it's finding voids in the mountain here to move water through, and it's coming out right here. The thing is that it is fairly consistent. It doesn't huh. dry up. It's never dried up, no matter how bad our droughts have been. The confluence of Fall Creek and the San Lorenzo River is about a hundred yards downstream from the Highway 9 bridge, just south of the high school campus. When water levels are low, the mouth of the creek can be explored on foot as it enters the river in a comparatively small trickle. But during times of high water flow, the mouth of the creek is widened substantially and a sharp contrast between relatively clear Fall Creek and the larger sediment-laden San Lorenzo River can be seen. While the lack of building and excavation along Fall Creek is one reason its waters are clearer during high water flow, another reason is the geological makeup of the two sides of the San Lorenzo Valley. The eastern slopes of the valley, which include Bear Creek, Zianti Creek, and a number of others are primarily sedimentary, being composed of softer sandstone and mudstone, which means they contain a lot of sand and mud that cause more sediment suspension and cloudiness during heavy water flow. Whereas the presence of very little mud in the igneous and metamorphic formations along the western side contribute to less cloudiness and clearer water flow. Just outside the lower entrance to the state park are the water intake area and fish ladders for Felton, closely monitored by water district employees Dave Bassler and John Tregembo. When they built this place, the original walls, they just built right on the stream bed. And uh -huh. so over the years, the, the water kind of got tunneled underneath those walls. So we were getting so much leakage that we couldn't yeah. keep water coming up over the top so they so they, they came in here with uh, cranes and buckets and a lot of guys and and just started digging and moving the boulders and dug it down to the harder bedrock and then they poured the concrete walls underneath these to try you, to seal the ones them. right here huh? yeah. yeah well being a water treatment operator i have to make sure that the water that's coming into our plant um, is fit to be brought into our plant um, certainly this time of year when we don't have any storm events, the water is usually, uh, you can bring it in pretty much any time. But when we do have storm events, the water becomes can become very turbid. We can bring it in to a certain extent, but then we may have to shut off our Fall Creek intake so that we're taking water from then our springs instead. That is always a tricky thing, especially if the storm event goes for a while, because a good 80 to 90 percent of our water can come from Fall Creek. Now we're getting more water because our springs are, will pick up in volume so we can get more water, but it's, it's always a, it can be a challenge, you know, um, in, in the winter time when you get those storm events. From the intake area, water is pumped to the Kirby Street treatment plant in downtown Felton, where it is processed into clean drinking water. A quick tour of the facility reveals the main building where water is treated and filtered. The clarification basins. The solar panels which provide some of the power for the facility and the finished tank, known as a clear well, which stores the filtered water. From the Kirby plant, the treated water is distributed to the community of Felton. Taking their supply of pure drinking water for granted, 
Early settlers regarded their watershed mainly as a source of income and personal enrichment through extraction of natural resources. As the devastating consequences of this way of thinking became apparent, a shift in attitude took place that helped bring about an awareness of the importance of caring for our watershed to preserve and maintain a healthy water supply. As a result, the San Lorenzo Valley community now has a fairly pristine watershed. Our watershed is a gift and if we care for it properly, it will continue to be a source of clean water for drinking, recreation, education, and inspiration, not only for us and our children, but for many generations to come.